it's the most accessible like marine biology or marine life that you can see um and it has like this extra added draw that you can only see it at low tide right so it's extra special because you have to be there at the right time you can go to a beach and it's completely covered with water and then six hours later it's a whole world that is completely different you can pretty much see almost every phyla yeah, of, of organism out there, which is amazing as well. And just seeing how all these organisms coexist um, in these crazy interesting little communities that they have out there um, is just mind-blowing. Every time we go out there, I mean, it's like we go out tide pulling twice a month, basically at least all year, and every time I'm excited to go. Like I always find something new or interesting or something to get excited about. It's an incredible community. The inner title is just the area um, where the land meets the sea that is sometimes covered by water when the tide is high and then sometimes uncovered or exposed to the air when the tide is low. The rock inner tidal is where the um, rock is exposed and lots of seaweeds and animals make their homes there. The best time to go tide pooling is definitely during low tide. So twice a month uh, we have our low, low tides and that is definitely the best time to go out to the tide pools. Usually an hour before the low tide, so you're catching it as it's going out. Um, and then you can hang out and stay out for a couple hours as the tide starts to come back in. The newspaper has the low tides for the, like, the day and then the three days coming up. Um, but you can get an app for your phone and you can also search online. Um, there are lots of different tide, tide tables. I'd say a lot of people who go out to the tide pools are really excited to find starfish or sea stars. We often find the bigger ones out here, but there's also a bunch of little small starfish as well. So looking um, carefully and finding those smaller species is pretty fun for people who've never seen them before. Um, we also really love nudibranchs or sea slugs, <laughs> um, which are very colorful, generally very colorful creatures out there in the tide pools that you might not notice right away because they're small, generally. Um, you know, so taking time and looking on um, algae that's in the water, or looking on the sides and ledges that are underwater um, is a great way to find sea slugs and yeah. other species. Yeah, one of the things that I really like to do, um, especially with people who have never been out to the tide pools, is find a good pool and just sit really still and watch and see what you can see. Um, there are so many different animals and so many seaweeds um, all living in one place. And if you're just kind of slow and steady, you can kind of, you can see a lot of different things. The number one thing you want for tide pooling is good shoes with tread that can get wet. Um, we like rubber boots, but if you don't have rubber boots, if you have um, you know, a pair of sneakers that you don't mind getting wet, that's a good idea. Or some like Chaco or Tiva sandals are good to have, but you don't want our flip flops. <laughs> Not so good in the tide pools because it's so slippery out there. Um, so that's the number one thing. And then basically you just want to make sure you have layers, clothes that you don't mind getting a little bit wet, things like that. The thing you most need for finding things is just your eyes and paying attention. But an underwater camera is probably, um, especially for making observations, um, some people are a little nervous about bringing a cell phone into the tide pools, um, rightly so. But they're really, really great underwater cameras that have good macro lenses um, and GPS built in that are really great for making observations. Some people, because you can look under um, ledges, some people like to wear a headlamp um, so you can see more clearly. So some beaches have rules about what you can take into jars or vessels. So I would say look if you're going to a beach, especially like a state park or a county park that has some um, ranger presence, uh, make sure you find the rules about what you can and can't have. But some people like to bring little plastic dishes um, to hold something um, just temporarily to take photographs. Basically, well, you just want to be careful when you're out tide pooling, um, especially if you're going out on a rocky reef, you're probably stepping on a lot of things on your way out there. So you just want to be mindful of where you're putting your feet. Most of the creatures out there can stand your pressure as you walk on them, because you know you imagine when those tides come in, those waves just pound those creatures. Um, so, but just being gentle is really important. If you're looking under rocks, it's really important to you know pick smaller rocks, carefully lift them up, see what you can find, and then carefully put them back down because those creatures are living in that specific habitat where it's dark and wet and cool. A lot of things out there have hard shells, but a lot of things are very soft and squishy too. So you just want to be really gentle as you're moving things and touching things. Yeah, and for many um, of these invertebrates, things without backbones that can't move very far, um, it's really critical if you do lift something up to look at it to put back where you found it. So generally when you're tide pulling, um, you do have waves somewhere near by you. <laughs> so it's a really good idea um, to be watching those waves. I um, mean, you know, a lot of people say to never 
never turn your back on the ocean. Sometimes, though, when you're really getting into looking at a tide pool, you might not be able to see the ocean exactly where you are. But basically just checking what the tide is doing. Is it coming in? How big are these waves coming in? And like we said, it's really slippery in the tide pools. So um, we're always out there walking really carefully, really slowly. Having hands that are free to catch you um, is really key as well. You should always check to make sure there aren't things that are venomous or um, dangerous because there are things in tide pools that can be um, harmful. And one thing is really um, that is really important is to kind of like think about how you got out to the where you are tide pooling and how water might fill back in. And um, because even though you might be somewhere that's dry and you're tide pooling away and seeing lots of things and there are great places to stand, your access point might be flooded. And it's also if you're exploring alone, like all things in wilderness and nature, make sure people know where you are if you're out on your own.